Welcome back to the Ants Subang YouTube channel. Today we will look into the Camponotus ant genus, in particular Camponotus simseni. This video will also be an update on how they are doing. I hope you will enjoy this video. Those who have been following my channel for a while will recall that I started this colony with only a half dozen workers. They've been in my care for over a year and I love them a lot. As they grew, I moved them from the test tube to our small starter formicarium for their further development. They were doing so well that the first super majors were delivered into the colony at very early stages of their growth. I even named her Dumbo in a video I made of her. I watched her grow into a giant, and soon after, a few of her giant sisters came along. I no longer worry that she was lonely and that I thought she was an accidental super major that was in close at an early stage. In the previous video I showed you, I was in the process of moving them into a new medium-sized nest to further their growth as they have outgrown themselves in our starter kit nest. So far, this starter nest has never failed me yet. In fact, I used it for all medium to large-sized species of ants. So here they are in a new nest. Well, it's not that new. It has been a few months since I moved them here. They are doing extremely well, and Dumbo is still with us, ever so majestically in appearance. There are only a few super majors in the nest, and they have only produced one at a time for the current size of the colony. I believe it really depends on the food intake as well as the colony's ability to produce these giants. They require a lot of energy to produce. The queen is extremely fertile and has been seen churning out small clutches of five eggs a day. Yes, I counted the eggs, and she is a beast to behold. Their brood pile is amazing to watch. It was also an indication that tells me they are doing well. I do notice a difference in brood management compared to my other Camponotus species. Although at different stages of brood development, they are always put together, but in a few scattered groups. I am not sure why, but I believe separating into groups at all stages makes brood management a little better with spaces to navigate in between. After all, they are a bulky ant species. I also notice they do not like a constantly moist nest and avoid getting close to the wettest part of the nest either. So I decided to remove the moisture water tower from the nest and only wet the sponge within by manually dripping water into it. It is working out better for them so far, but I cannot let it dry out too much for a long period of time. I really enjoyed watching them. They have totally different characteristics, which I like. Just like my Camponotus nicobarensis, they are very alert about their surroundings. They would rush out of the nest when they knew it was feeding time. They would sniff the air vigorously with their antennae, knowing food would fall from the sky. I will show you their feeding habits once the colony grows a little larger, but for now I want to focus on their super majors. Before that, let me briefly introduce this genus of ants, Camponotus, and the giants that they produce. Please bear with me if you are already a seasoned keeper. I may not be an expert, but I am happy to share what I know with what I have been keeping. There are more than a thousand species of Camponotus. They are given local names based on where they are from. Their most common name is carpenter ants. They build their nest, they excavate fallen tree trunks and form smooth tunnels inside wooden caverns. Not all species will form their nests in tree trunks, but those that do will have strong, giant workers with menacing mandibles. I will explain a little about these types of workers later in this video. Camponotus is one of those ants who are accustomed to living within the confines of the colony. Unlike the yellow crazy ant or other ant species, they don't occupy a vast area of the nest. They are generally peace-loving ants who do not prefer to harm or disturb other ants unless they feel threatened. This is generally the case with Camponotus, unlike army ants, which specialize in nest raiding of other ant species and killing anything that moves along their raiding paths. When ants feel threatened, they usually let out a bite or sting, but not for Camponotus. In fact, they do not sting. Even if they can bite, it may not be too big an issue, but ant species that do sting will definitely have you writhing in pain. Let's get back to where we want to touch on further down in this video. So in Camponotus, they can produce a larger major cast up to 10mm to 45mm long in the largest ant species, which has a very obvious, 
much larger head and which makes up about 5% of the colony population. Although Campanota's super major mandibles look intimidating, it's not the bite we should be concerned about. It is their formic acid, which they release when they feel threatened. It will not harm us, but for small insects, it is a burning sensation that will last for a while or even kill them depending on the type of Campanotus species that delivered it. In human-sized terms, imagine getting doused with iron-melting hydrochloric acid. It will definitely disfigure you, and the pain will be excruciating. From some of the antkeepers' perspective out there, I do get asked a lot about what species of ants produce super-majors. The sole reason is to see them engaged in battle. I get that, but for Campanotus, Super Majors cast primarily for defense. Instead, their powerful jaws are used for cutting up large pieces of food into small pieces, which can more easily be transported back to the nest by the numerous smaller workers. In terms of wanting them to battle, which they do, but not unnecessarily. They go to war for specific reasons. Ant societies are more similar to ours as humans than you know. There are one or two reasons why they could start a war in the wild. When they do go to war, it is an aggressive interaction between ants of different or the same species. The first is mainly engaged in competition with other ants for food supply. The other reason for starting a war is that encroaching on another ant colony's land will start a deadly war between the colonies. Instead, since Campanotus is a peace-loving ant genus, these giants fight off invading ants or other insect intruders, often by using their extra-large heads in a shield-like defense. It really depends on the species of Campanotus, whether they are the aggressor type. Generally, Campanotus supermajors are storage containers and are used to break down food or dig wooden tunnels. They're not meant to fight other ants, and that is what I am going to show you in this small experiment. It may not justify anything at all, but I am just going to show you the interaction between two species, giving the predicament they will be in. So far, I've captured the two largest super majors from my Campanotus Simsini colony in this experiment. I lured them out when honey was given to them in the outworld. I simply took two of them out. There are only five giants that are in my colony. Unfortunately, Dumbo was one of the unlucky ones. I knew that was her. She was the smallest of them all, since she was the first super major enclosed and least nutrient fed during the youthful stage of the colony. I chose the harvester ant super major from my Messer Barbarus colony for them to engage in battle against the Campanotus super majors. Known to crack seeds with their strong mandibles, hopefully we will see some action. Again, both of these species do not sting, and I wanted them to have balance and fair engagement. I started off with a pair of them to see what response they would give each other in this battle arena, if you will. I reluctantly introduced Dumbo into the arena, hoping for a fierce battle between the two giants. We can tell immediately attacking each other wasn't their first choice, but instead they ran in opposite directions from each other. Although the Campanotus is assuming a defensive posture, she will not administer any bites to the Harvester Ant Major. Although there were quick strikes, none did any sort of damage. The Messer Barbarus Major, on the other hand, didn't want anything to do with the Campanotus Major and scurried off once they touched. Nothing really happened so far, and I decided to go for another Messer Barbarus Major with a slightly smaller build in the arena. Surprisingly, this one Messer Major appears to be interested in pursuing the Campanotus Major. They didn't want anything to do with each other, although there were already two Messer Barbarus Majors in the arena. I was hoping that two against one would rouse them into battle. I waited, but still they would not engage. I know what you guys are thinking. Perhaps adding another Campanotus Super Major will make a difference, and I did just that. This Super Major is slightly larger than Dumbo, and she has a faster reaction time. Again, not much action here, although there were four of them now in the arena. Not satisfied with the open battle arena, I went ahead and put all four of them together in a test tube, hoping that closer proximity would leave them no choice but to fight each other upon contact. You can tell that the Campanotus Major is more composed, whereby the Messer Barbarus Major is more fidgety. In the end, the Campanotus Major did land a few bites on the Messer Major, but nothing deadly. 
They are still moving around in the test tube as if they don't know how to use their best attacking tool, their mandibles, to get rid of the opponents. At the end of the day, no ants were hurt in the making of this video. There is no conclusion to this play for thought experiment. So I thought. Both species had their super majors return to the colony with a few bruises and stress. Something interesting happened when I returned Dumbo back to the colony. She immediately ran into a corner of the nest and not into the nesting chamber as I would have thought. She was then being chased down by other workers within the nest. The workers didn't seem to leave her alone and appeared to not allow her to walk away by herself. What could have led to such an outcome that she was hounded by other workers? The first thing that came to mind was, could the Messer Barbarus Major be capable of spraying formic acid? Could they have released formic acid and some of it have gotten onto Dumbo? Hence, the workers were trying to clean her before she could be let go, or perhaps there were pheromones from the Messer Barbarus Major that could linger around her. I thought to myself that this could be some form of quarantine and I do know that ants will clean themselves after a meal or a battle. That's what I thought. Dumbo was forcefully held down. Some workers were holding her leg, preventing her from running away. The cleaning took a long time, in fact, hours passed. It is very interesting behavior, and I have not seen this being applied to normal workers. This may not be any form of formal experiment or any scientific outcome that will come out of it, but it is good for us to experience their interactions within the confines of our own ant room. Campanota's supermajors are meant to defend the colony against larger predators. They are ridiculously good at holding down prey and breaking them apart. They aren't meant to fight other ants, and they have no killer instinct. While Campanota's supermajors have an imposing appearance, to say the least, they are simply misjudged. All in all, Campanota's supermajors are an important part of the workforce, but not all ant species have supermajors, and most ants only have one worker cast. These species may have strength in numbers and their minuscule size, for which they do not need a major cast in the colony. Take, for instance, the famous ghost ants. If a Campanotos colony is attacked by these ant species, the supermajors are the ones that will have the least effectiveness against this tiny invasive species. They will not stand a chance against the ghost ants' ability to take down even the mightiest colony with giants in their midst. Thank you for watching.